morning, Moltan Gozo, and welcome to another episode of Love and Daily. I'm your host, Sam Vasala, joined today by JP Atzapardi. Let's get straight into the headlines. So, a COVID-19 victim's daughter has called out the lack of dignity in a final farewell. Um, meanwhile, last night, a protest held outside Parliament um, against police brutality in Nigeria took place. A hangover during COVID-19 has costed this Nepalese man 3,000 euros. And the Pope named a former Gozo bishop um, a cardinal for the first time ever. And lastly, we'll end with, of course, Mota's Got Talent and this Maltese dancer bringing one judge uh, to tears. Let's go right into it. Yeah, for sure. So um, quite some sad news actually coming over the weekend uh, regarding the realities of uh, COVID-19 victims. Um, Charles Camilleri, who unfortunately passed away as a result of COVID-19 at the age of 82, was a local councillor and Santa Venera. His daughter spoke out about the, um, her, her journey basically in, 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 in his, well, his COVID journey and how it has affected the family and how health authorities have dealt with the whole situation. Um, basically, when her, father, when her father passed away from COVID-19, uh, the ministry had claimed that he had underlying health conditions. She, in fact, came out saying he was perfectly fine and stable before he got COVID-19. Um, but, um, you know, as, as it tends to be the case, the government kind of it seems to be uh, using this umbrella branch as of, of suffering from underlying conditions. But basically, he tested positive for COVID-19. He had recovered somewhat, was transferred to St. Thomas's Hospital, but then transferred to Mata Day where his condition worsened. Um, despite attempts made by family to, to see him, to visit him in hospital, uh, they were denied this opportunity. Um, some of them were in quarantine because he had tested positive for COVID-19 and whatnot. He eventually passed away and, you know, as per the rules uh, in, in uh, Malta when it comes to COVID-19 victims, the family only had 24 hours to uh, organize his funeral and all the preparations and whatnot. But that obviously involved them not being able to actually, you know, send a, say a final farewell to their, to their, to their granddad, to her father, and they, um, you know, weren't able to be there for his actual funeral. In fact, there was a video where it showed him just passing through the street in the car, in his coffin, as on his way to the cemetery to be buried. And her family are um, waving, crying from the window. Her young ones, her, 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 her uh, kids, kids, um, you know, were, were asking why they couldn't see their nanu, why they couldn't go near him. And basically, Corinne was, was basically criticizing, uh, she told Logan Morse, was criticizing the health authorities for how they dealt with her father, saying they treated her and her family like an an animals, her father, by not allowing them to go to the funeral, um, despite the fact that, you know, they allowed her to get her, go out of the house to get her te uh, kids tested for COVID. They wouldn't, health authorities wouldn't allow her to go outside the house to attend her father's funeral. And just so the sad reality, basically, of, of COVID-19 victims in Malta. Um, and how, you know, it, it's just, just like that, you know, as soon as, as they die, it's, it's 24 hours, say goodbye, you can't even attend their funeral, mm -hmm. and that's it, end of story. It's a, it's a super emotional, I think that even though, you know, we're going through this COVID fatigue, this is a, quite a stark reminder of, of the fact that this affects a lot of people, particularly those who lose loved ones mm -hmm. uh, to COVID-19. Now, speaking of COVID-19, we can give you uh, the latest update over there. There were 125 new cases of COVID-19 found yesterday, meaning active cases have risen again to 1,880, and there were also 89 recoveries. It seems that Malta has upped its um, swabbing strategy. More than 3,000 swab tests were um, carried out yesterday, and I believe this week we are going to have um, the rapid COVID-19 tests being rolled out, uh, particularly in the airport. There was also a uh, COVID-19 death yesterday, an 82-year-old man. He has become Malta's 51st COVID-19 death. Um, super sad. Malta, uh, Loving Malta also had the, an exclusive yesterday about a COVID-19 case um, in court, I believe. Mm -hmm. Just after his sitting, he was found to be positive and of course they fumigated the place um, to just show how, how um, active it is within the community. So moving on to our next story. A protest was held yesterday outside Parliament um, by the Nigerian community in Malta against a um, police unit in their homeland. So um, if, you're, if you're watching international news, you know that, that there are um, mass protests happening around the world, particularly in Nigeria. 
um, under the name hashtag end SARS. So SARS, which is the special anti-robbery squad, which is a police unit in Nigeria, has come under fire of, after over 80 accusations of violent crimes. Um, these particular protests, which are youth-led, were sparked after a video went viral showing um, a child, a, a young boy, being shot dead, allegedly, by a SARS officer. Um, and now, you know, activists and, and protesters are demanding the disbandment of this police unit and um, better governance from um, the Nigerian government. Um, we've reported on this protest. There was also a live video taken by Orlando John Bright. If, you were, if you're following Loving Malta for a while, you know that um, Orlando came into the media after um, he was assaulted by his, his uh, ex-employer for demanding his pay. And Loving Malta actually sat down with him um, to understand how he was directly affected by um, SARS. In fact, his father was shot dead by a SARS officer three years ago, and essentially he recounted he uh, he recounted his journey from Nigeria to Niger all the way to Malta, where he is now um, seeking asylum. Moving on to our next story, yeah. shall we? So another COVID nineteen related story, in fact, quite a peculiar one, but um, you know. Um, this pandemic has been gone for quite a few months now, and back in back in 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 in, in March and, and April and whatnot, there was a self quarantine period for people coming in from foreign countries. And one Nepalese man, Sushil, actually became became the victim of a three thousand euro fine uh, when he arrived in Malta. He and his friends had obviously had to quarantine for fourteen days. Uh, they went in quarantine, and obviously we all know how boring it can be when you're stuck in a room in quarantine. And have a bit of fun. They they you know had a, they they drank one night, maybe a bit too much, uh, and the next day he woke up around 1 p.m. to a flurry of missed phone calls. Uh, at first he was a bit confused as to why he had all these phone calls, but he ignored it at first. And then a few days later he uh, had a knock on the door from from police officers who were furious at him, um, claiming that you know he he had uh, they had tried to contact him the other day, they had tried to knock on his hotel room door. He tried to call him, but he wouldn't reply, and they claimed that he had broken quarantine rules by leaving his room. They assumed that he had left his room. So Shil now tells a story that, in fact, he was just um, in a, just hung over. He just had a bit too much rest that day and, 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 and didn't hear them knocking, didn't hear, hear the, uh, the missed calls. A um, few months later, he, he, he didn't hear anything from them, but then he uh, recently received a 3,000 euro fine from Lhasa. Um, and he presumes it's because of this, but he can't really tell because it's all in Maltese. So he's got this 3,000 euros fine for what we believe is to be his, his, him breaching self quarantine, which he claims he never did. It's all in Maltese, and, and now he's, he, as a third country national, is having to pay 3,000 euros, which, which is a lot, a lot of money, especially if someone, when you're just moving to a country, it's not what you want to, and you need to get your feet sorted, you know, get on your stand on two feet. You don't want to be facing a 3,000 euro fine in your first, first week here. What, what, what do you think? <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, I think it's an unfortunate story. It's a, it's a little mm. bit funny as well. You know, that's, that's probably the most expensive hangover um, I've ever heard of. Um, but I believe now with, you know, with the amnesty scheme announced, he could potentially uh, get that fine uh, revoked. Mm. I, I believe he's, he's definitely has the merits yeah. for it. No, that, that's if the amnesty scheme is still in place. We've, Robert, Promise Robert Bell announced it back over summer that there was there's going to be this amnesty scheme for individuals who, who, who you know, in certain special circumstances like this would, would get their fine revoked. But we haven't heard anything since. Uh, we don't know if this amnesty scheme is still in place, but it seems like Sushil is definitely, unfortunately, one of those people that <laughs> could be, uh, could have this fine revoked, we yeah. hope. I mean, we'll definitely be following it here at Love and Motor, so, so stay tuned for that. Meanwhile, um, historic Catholic news, a Gossetan priest has been personally chosen by Pope Francis to become a, a cardinal and join him um, in his new high-ranking job in the Vatican. So Mario Grec was chosen with, um, along with 13 other new cardinals named by Pope Francis. Um, this is the first time in, in, in history for a Gosden priest and he's the second cardinal ever to come from the Maltese islands. Um, Pope Francis, you know, I think definitely the most liberal Pope um, we've ever had, was meant to come to Malta um, earlier this year, but of course his trip got cancelled because of COVID-19. Um, I'm, I'm very, I'm very um, happy for Mario Grec. I'm, I'm sure that, that um, Catholics in Malta are very, very proud of, of Ireland right now. Of course, I mean, he was personally chosen by, by Pope Francis for this position. Um, he follows Prospero Grec, who was 
uh, the first Maltese cardinal to be appointed. Unfortunately, he passed away just last December, a beloved figure, not just in the Catholic community, but in Malta as a whole. Um, but yeah, we wish the best for Greg now in his, his new position, it's obviously a highly prestigious position in the Catholic Church, and we hold, hope he holds it well. And our last story of the day, um, obviously Malta's Got Talent uh, happened last night, everyone was watching on TV, a number of incredible acts as usual, and one of them was particularly um, touching and emotional, one of uh, a, a Maltese dancer called Warren Bonello, who performed his uh, choreography and performed his solo dance uh, on stage. And apart from it being an amazing dance, he, uh, uh, he moved the judges by dedicating his, this particular dance to a student of his who was battling cancer and is currently recovering from it. Um, so it was quite an emo apart from the fact it was a great dance, it was quite an emotional dance for him and for the judges as well. Right, Sam? Indeed. So it was so touching that uh, Judge Maxine Aquilina actually cried um, when giving his review of the performance. And in fact, he got, spoiler alert, four yeses. So mm -hmm. he's moving on uh, to the next round of Malta's Got Talent. Well, I mean, that's, a, that's essential Sunday viewing. We'll, we also do live blogs and um, our own kind of reviews of Malta's Got Talent. Absolutely. So be sure to, sh to, to, to follow that um, every Sunday. That's all from us here at Loving Malta. Be sure to follow us on all socials from Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and have a day full of loving.